This video will show some advanced vector feature editing operations using ArcGIS Pro. Uh, list of operations covered in this video is here in this list, so you can kind of scan it to see if what you're trying to do is covered here. And I will try to go roughly in this order as we go through the different operations. Um, I'll be working in ArcGIS Pro. Here's some data that I've created for this demonstration. Uh, I have some digitized roads that are in yellow here uh, and some water bodies which are in blue. We'll also be adding some areas of sensitive shoreline using this red line and we'll be digitizing some protected areas. So let's start with uh, working with this water. Right now if I select this you'll see that it's uh, this is a multi-part feature and there may be uh, many good reasons why we want to split this up into uh, single part features. Um, we might want to put individual attributes on each lake, for example. So the way we would take care of this is going down and uh, choosing Explode. And uh, we'll get the Explode tool showing up here. Um, and all we have to do here is um, click Explode and it will take care of it for us. Now we might not see an immediate change. Uh, but it happens pretty fast. So if we go back to our map here and we go back and select, uh, we'll see that these are now individual features and they're recorded in the attribute table now as two features instead of one. Now this lake is a little bit off. Uh, we need to move it. Uh, this can happen for various reasons when you bring in data. Maybe there's a, um, a problem with the original digitizing. Maybe it was digitized off of another map that was off and so it doesn't line up. Um, so the way that we're going to move this is just highlight it and choose move. And then we should be able to drag it um, into place. Whoops. Uh, <laughs> you can click move here. And we'll try and line it up correctly with the, the lake. And then we're done. So just click the check mark right like that. Now this lake was digitized poorly. There's uh, an area that's actually not part of the lake right here. So we want to cut this out. And uh, the reshape tool can be pretty useful for that when you want to reshape a large part of a feature. Um, what you do is you just click outside the feature and then you start clicking inside where you want to make the new boundary. So I'm going to follow the shoreline here like this. And then I'll snap to the edge and click out again. And it's just going to, um, it's just going to cut it out. So I double clicked and see how it now follows my new shape. Another thing that's sometimes helpful here if you just want to make one little edit is to right click and you can choose edit vertices and then you can grab any of these vertices and, and kind of move it so I can move this maybe so it better approximates what I feel is the edge of the shore and do a little bit more fine-tuned editing and just click the check mark when I'm done. See how that boundary moved. Now let's use a uh, the tracing tool to digitize some sensitive shorelines. So I'm going to go over to this other lake. Uh, this lake has a fair amount of vertices in here. Um, what I want to do is just trace a line along part of this shore. And I want to make sure I trace it exactly along this line. So what I'm going to do is choose sensitive shoreline. Um, I'm going to create features. Whoops, I clicked modify. There we go. Create. Highlight uh, the sensitive shoreline here. Um, and then choose trace tool and what this will do is when I click on a, an existing feature like this lake um, and I start making my line it will just follow the shore I'm actually moving my mouse way over see how it follows and I could draw a line all around this and this makes sure that I don't miss any vertices so let's say the sensitive shoreline is just on the east side of the lake here I could double click and now I have that red line representing sensitive shoreline I'm going to go ahead and digitize some other areas of sensitive shoreline also using this trace. So maybe there's one up here on this lake, uh, here on the south side. I don't even have to hold down my mouse button here. I'm just moving it um, to trace. Double click. And maybe there's one more um, just little area here on the northwest side of this lake. Okay, and the trace tool is perfect for all of these because I want it to exactly follow the edge of the water. So uh, I've got these areas of sensitive shoreline. Now, um, if I look at my attribute table here, I don't have any attributes that I've created in this case, but I do want you to see that this is stored as three individual features right now. And so if I highlight these three, you'll see them uh, being selected on the map. 
Now let's suppose I just wanted one single polyline of all sensitive shoreline. How could I combine these three into one? This is sort of the opposite of the explode um, operation that we performed. Now the way that we do that is called merge. So if you click merge, over here the merge tool will show up. Um, there might be one of the features that has attributes you want to preserve, so you would you would highlight that here. In our case, I don't have any attributes, so I don't care which one of these everything gets merged into. So I can just click merge and it will do that operation. See how it's now one single uh, polyline. So let's say that I want to digitize a protected area that starts on this lake and then follows the road and then comes out here. So uh, I'm going to start by clicking on the edge of this lake. And notice how it's tracing the lake. And then I'm going to click on the road. It starts tracing the road. Now right here I want to stop tracing things and come out here into the forest. So I can right click and go to this um, line sketch. And it will allow me now to put down vertices over here. So maybe the protected area uh, kind of comes this way. And then I finish it by double clicking. Now let's say we may need to do some complex things with this one. So uh, for example, what if I need to cut a hole in this because part of it uh, belongs to another property owner and it's not protected. Maybe it was grandfathered into the deal where they could make this a, a protected area. So uh, what I'm going to do here is go over to modify, or I'm going to select this and go over to modify features. I was in the merge tool, so I got to get back out. Um, and what I'm looking for here is, uh, is continue feature. And that allows me to just uh, digitize a hole inside and double click. And now I've got what's called a donut polygon there. Now, I also might want to just add a polygon that uh, joins onto this one. So there's an option for that here in this autocomplete polygon. And the way you do that is you just uh, start drawing a line inside. It's kind of like reshape. Um, and then you digitize on the exterior what you want. And then you come back in and finish the sketch. And it will detect any lines that were sh are shared. And um, sometimes there's quirky stuff with visualization. So notice how I, how I had to zoom in for this to show up. But if I select it, it sh shows the boundary that I want. Now, another thing I might want to do is cut this in half. So sometimes your areas get subdivided. And uh, that's really easy to do with this tool split. So all I need to do is just draw a line that cuts through there. And if I double click, it will split the polygon into two. You can also split lines, and that's helpful in a case like this one where um, I'll show you uh, most of my road segments are just individual streets and they end uh, when they reach an intersection. Um, and when they turn, they, they become another feature. But this one uh, is just one single feature. And let's suppose that this top road has a different name than this road going uh, north-south. So I want to split it right here at this vertex uh, so that it becomes two different features. Um, so the way you can do that is choose to split and then you double click the vertex you want it to split at. Okay, so I double click there and now if I clear out my selected features and select now, you'll see that these are two different roads. So I could, for example, put different attributes on here for the road name, the speed limit, the pavement type, and so on.